of Math 152, we're going to take a peek at Section 3.6. And we are looking at numeric methods for doing integrals. And we're going to we're going to look at three different types. So sometimes you just can't do the integral, or sometimes you just are going to do an approximation for it. So we're going to do three different ways to think about it. And the first is uh, the midpoint. And uh, we've, we've talked about things, ideas like this before when we actually developed up what an integral is. And, and now we're going to step back and use them um, to think about what integrals are. They're just like these piecewise thinking, add, adding up a bunch of stuff repeatedly. So if we had uh, this integral right now, uh, we know what that is. There's a graph of it from 1 to 2. That's the function x squared. I'm talking about the area of this curve right here, right? And we know how to do that integral. Um, that would be 1 third x cubed evaluated from 1 to 2. So it would be uh, 1 third 2 cubed minus 1 cubed, which is 8 minus 1, which would be 7 thirds. So that would be the exact area under there. But remember what we did was we, this dx is this, this little infinitesimally little small change in x. What we really did is we we added up a, a bunch of uh, a bunch of rectangles to get there, an infinite number of them. So we're going to step back to there. We're actually going to um, we're gonna do that. So we're going to do an approximation for this using the midpoint. And again, this is this is really useful when we can't actually just do the integral, but we want a value for it. Like if we didn't know what the integral of x squared was, um, it also helps us think about what integrals are. You know, it's it's adding up these little repeated changes when something's not changing at a constant rate. So for the midpoint one, let's do uh, let's do four partitions here. So we might say midpoint broken into four pieces. We have this a to b, right? And so if we're going to break that into four pieces, it goes from two back to one. Our change in x is going to be one fourth. So if I want to break this into four parts, these are going to have to go over by fourths. As a four fourths, you could do, you could probably do decimals too, but I'm not going to do that. So five fourths, uh, six fourths, which is what, three halves, seven fourths, and notice this would be eight fourths. So we've broken it up like that. And now what we want to do, though, is we're going to do what's called the midpoint of these. So I look at these, each of these little spots in here, there's my change in x. Notice my width, my change in x is one fourth. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the midpoint of each of these, and I'm going to make a rectangle off the midpoint. So like here, here, too high. And the idea about this midpoint one is you get a little, some of it that's a little over, that some of it's that's a little under, so you feel like it might might kind of help average out. It's better than doing like a left-handed or a right-handed one. Four rectangles, and they all have the same base of one-fourth. That change in x is one-fourth. So I'm going to be one-fourth times, well, whatever this is, whatever that value is at, um, after I plug it into the function, after I plug it into x squared. This is 4 fourths, this is 5 fourths. What I want is just the average of these two, like what's right in the middle of those two. So you could add them together, divide by 2. Um, you could also, you know, maybe think of this as 8 eighths and this is 10 eighths, right? So this must be 9 eighths. And then it's going to be, uh, so that is the area of this rectangle right here, right? F of 9 eight, eighths is the height right there, because we plug in 9 eighths, we get that height, times width, right? Length times length times width gives us the area of that. And so this one's 9 eighths, so this one is going to be 11 eighths, 13 eighths, and then 15 eighths. And there we go, I have my four rectangles. And if I'm going to uh, simplify this a little bit. Notice they all have a one fourth in them, right? They're all multiplied by one, by one fourth. So I could think of it as one fourth times just all of these pieces added together.
And then, um, so each of these are squared, right? This is 9 8 squared, 11 8 squared, 13 8 squared, 15 8 squared. Um, and so however you want to go about calculating that, you can, but that will give us an approximation for the area. And I'm going to I'm going to show you a couple ways to think about this. I think the easiest way to think about this is to uh, just use a calculator that can store some stuff. So if I'm using like the TI, I'm going to take this uh, this function x squared, and I'm just going to put it into my y equals. So if I go into here to y equals, I'm going to say x squared. So now y1 is that function x squared and quit out of here. And then now what I'm going to do is just go, okay, I've got 1 fourth times 9 eighths plugged into that function. So I can use this var variable button to bring up, whoops, just that variable button to bring up my y variables. And I want y1. And now if I say of 9 eighths, that will put 9 eighths into y1. And then plus, I'll do it again for 11 eighths, 13 eighths, 15 eighths. So I've got this all in here. I'll hit enter, and this gives me a 2.3 something, 2.328, let's say. Uh, seven thirds. What's seven? Pretty darn close, right? I'm off by just a little bit. So that, that gets me thinking about error. Um, and there's, there's two different types of errors I can think about here. One of them is the absolute error. And uh, this is 2.3 repeating. Absolute error is just how far off you are. And we, we don't even care about um, positive or never, negative. So it's actual minus estimate. estimate. So if I went 2.333 minus 2.328, about 0 0.005 which so that's how far i'm actually off that's the the actual amount there's another one that's called relative error and it's a it's a percentage so it's the actual error divided by um the actual value and then you turn it into a, a percent so basically this is going to be 0 0.005 divided by that two and a third and it's about two 0.2%, that's not, that's not a bad error. But this is the basic idea with, uh, with midpoint. And if I wanted to get really like uh, mathy formulaic about it, I've got my uh, interval A to B. Change in X is B minus A over two. This should look familiar from the start of the course. Um, if I want N partitions, and M sub I is the midpoint of each part, partition. My midpoint approximation for N partitions would be uh, the sum from one to N, the number of partitions of that midpoint plugged into the function times the change in X. Notice that was my one fourth right there and then adding up all of those. So that's midpoint. Let's do a uh, trapezoid. Let's take that same let's take that same graph and do it for uh, for a trapezoid. So we have this again. We're going to give an estimate for um, that, but we are going to use trapezoids. And so for trapezoids, um, we're going from one to two again. We're going to split this into, let's do it into four pieces again. We'll just get another approximation for this one and, and see what happens. Um, so we'll go four of them. So I need to split this up into four parts. And again, um, you know, I could go two minus one divided by four, one fourth. There's my change in X. That's, that's how long uh, one of these bases is going to be. This is four fourths. I'm going by fourths. So five fourths, six fourths. Seven fourths, eight fourths. So there's my partitions. And now on this one, when we do trapezoids, we use all the points and we make trapezoids. So there's a trapezoid. And if I think of each of these trapezoids, you know, they're shaped like this. Um, I have these sides. I'll call this side one, 
side two, and my base. Notice my base is my change in x. So in this case, it's one fourth. And then to get the area of this, what I can do is I can, I can average out these heights. And what that does is that cuts this and it averages it and just makes it into a rectangle. So it's one half um, side one plus side two. So if I think about all of these uh, trapezoids, like if I just want the first, the first trapezoid here, if I just want its area, just this one right here, it would be um, one half f of one plus f of five fourths. And then that's times that change in x times the base. Because this is one fourth. This is f of one, that height. This is f of five fourths. So that's the area of just the first one. And then I could do that with all the rest of them, right? And you've seen, again, you've seen this before. One fourth times one half, but then it would be f of five fourths plus f of three halves. And then I do it again for the next one and do it again for the next one. Whew, so let's notice in here, all of, each of these pieces has the one fourth in it, that change in x. And they all have the one half in it because it's always the one half times the two sides. And so if I factor that out of everything, I want you to notice um, like this has been factored out, this has been factored out, this has been factored out. I've got F1, the first one, plus two of these, and then plus two of these. So everything in the middle gets added in there twice, right? Because it's the left-hand side and the right-hand side of trapezoids. I can think of the, the first one plus two times each of the middle ones. And then plus the end one, like that. And then um, again, I can shove that all into my calculator and, uh, and calculate out what it would be. And general form for this, for the trapezoid, T of N, um, I'm just going to write it out as one half times change in x, f of the first point, plus two times all the middle points, all up to the second to last one, plus just the last one. Right? These are the ends. And these are all in the ones in the middle that happen twice. And n is our number of partitions. I can change the next is that. So again, we could plug that in um, into our calculator. We could estimate it and get there. So we've got this trapezoid approximation, and we've also got this midpoint approximation. Good stuff. So there is another one that I want to talk about, and this is called. This is from um, Simpson's rule. I have a cat whose name was Simpson. I miss him. Um, so Simpson's rule does the same idea, but instead of using rectangles or trapezoids, it actually uses, this is great, pieces of parabolas. So we'll talk about using Simpson's rule to do um, an approximation for this. So here's a graph of what we're going to look at. So from 2 all the way out to 10, and 4 subintervals. So let's see, 10 minus 2 divided by 4, 8 over 4 is 2. So our change in x is 2. So it goes to 4, then it goes to 6, then it goes to 8, uh, then it goes to 10. So Simpson's rule, you have to have an even number of uh, partitions. And you'll see why here in a moment. So here's the idea behind Simpson's rule. Um, each of these partitions, each of these steps, there's our change in x right now. But we actually take three points. So we actually go over a range of, of two changes in x. And what we do is we fit a, a parabola into there. 
So, and, and then we take the next ones and notice this point gets used twice and we fit another parabola into there. And it's a lot of work to fit a parabola into a line, but uh, what's nice is Simpson's rule just encapsulates a bunch of work for us. Um, just to think a little bit more graphically, here is this function out from two to 10. Here's the one that I just graphed. So here's the function right here. So if I think about these first three points, two, four, six, I'm going to fit a parabola that goes through those points. And I've, I've, already, I've already done it. And this is, this is the actual parabola that fits through those points. And look at how close it is. It's pretty close. So we'll take the area under that uh, parabola from there to there. And then if I take the next three points, which you notice I, I reuse six, that one gets used twice. That's an important thing to remember to help you uh, know how this formula works. And I fit a parabola through those three. Look at that. So like, you can't even tell. Like it's so close on it. And then we take the area of it as well. That's the basic idea. So before I jump in and do Simpson's rule for this, I'm, I'm going to show you the general um, equation for it. And then from there, I'll show you where it comes from, and then we'll use it. So Simpson's rule, we want to approximate some uh, function from some start point to some end point. And I'm going to say there's, but we're going to approximate it with n partitions. And again, n is even, has to be. We get the change in x uh, over 3. And again, you'll see where the pieces come from. And that's multiplied by function of the first one plus 4 uh, times function of the next point plus 2 times function of the next point plus 4 times function of the next point. Point. And it keeps on doing this until we get to, uh, keeps alternating 4, 2, 4, 2. And then it gets down to 4 times function of the one before the last one plus the function of the last one. So the x0, x1, x2, x3, those are our partition points where it's broken up. Now, what I want you to notice is, like, it's funny that it goes 1, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2. Then back to one. But what's going on is remember uh, in the picture I drew those three points, this point is repeated. So it's actually going one, four, one, but then this gets repeated. One, four, one, it gets repeated. Boom, boom, one, four, one. For example, one, four, one, but then this gets repeated again, one, four, one. So this gets done twice. Maybe I'll just do it for this first. And then I'll then I'll show you where it comes from. So I've got this, I'm going to approximate 2 to 10, and I'm going to do it for uh, four partitions. So Simpson's rule uh, for four. So I've got to get my change in x. So 10 minus 2 over 4 is 2. So it looks like my change in x is, uh, is 2. So that means I'm going from 2 to 10. And I'm going by twos. So four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, that gives me four intervals in there. Good. So my change in x is two. So I've got two thirds. And then it's just like f of the first one plus four times f of the second one plus two, because it's repeated, f of the third one plus four f of the next one. And then with the last one, so the last one just happens one. Again, notice what this is what I'm trying to do is I'm getting an approximation for this area that's in this region right here, all this area that is underneath this curve, so this area right here. And I'm doing it by taking the integral of this little parabola and this little parabola and adding them together. Um, and I'll show you why again. So here we go. Uh, notice my function is natural log of x. Should have been an x in there. Sorry. Natural log of x. So really I'm going 2 thirds times natural log of 2 
plus 4 natural log of 4 plus 2 natural log of 6. And I can shove that onto my calculator. I get about uh, 13.628. And again, you can shove that direct into your calculator, um, you know, just like it is. If you wanted to do uh, that other method, you could sit, say let y equal natural log of x. And I'm not going to enter the whole thing, uh, but and then you can go uh, two thirds times and then plug two into the function, right? So variable you want y1 of zero. Close off the parentheses, right? Plug zero into y1 plus four times four plugged into that same function. And so on and enter it that way. You know, with natural log, you're not probably not solving saving too many keystrokes, but in a more complicated function, um, you know, it's a good way to go. So we've got this. So this is our approximation for that area that's under there. That is how um, Simpsons works. Um, I think I'm going to do one more example of just using it. And then, um, then I will show where it comes from. And at that point, if you don't want to watch where it comes from, you don't have to. You won't be tested on that. It's kind of interesting, I think. But uh, won't make you won't make you watch it. So let's get an approximation for this. And this is an S. So let's do six partitions. So we're going from one to four. We're breaking it up into six partitions. So four minus one, or six, three, six, that's one half. Okay, so if uh, this is one, that's two halves. The next would be three halves, and then four halves, which is two, and five halves. Yeah, then six halves, which is three, and seven halves, and then four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six partitions. Perfect. So those are my pieces. And if you're going to use decimals instead of fraction, you know, that is totally your prerogative as well. So my change in X. Is one half so I know it's changing X over three one half over three that's just one sixth uh, times and then plug each of these into the function f of one plus four f of the next one plus two of that one because it's repeated plus four of the next one plus two of the next one plus four of the next one, just cycles back and forth between two, four, two, four, plus the last one. And then it exits off a of four to just a single one of the last ones. So again, I, this is my uh, change in X over three, which is just the same as one sixth. So I'm gonna write that as one sixth. And then it just becomes some calculator work for me. You can do this one by hand if you want to plug in those in as well. Um, and on my calculator, I'll, I'll just do it on my calculator real quick. So my function is square root of 1 plus x squared. Then I'm going to get all this in here. And let's see. Boom, 8.146 about. And what a powerful method to do some calculus, a great way to do it without like doing the integrals, right? This is going to be pretty close. We could get that error if we could actually do that integral, um, which I think we probably could, and uh, see how far off we were. All right. So that's that's really the idea. If you want to see where Simpson's rule comes from, want to see it derived, I'm about to do it. Uh, you won't be tested over this, but it's a pretty, pretty fun ride. So... Um, if you want to watch the rest of it, great. And if you want to just start cranking out those assignments as well, go ahead and start doing that. It will show kind of where the four, the one third, the divide by three is coming from and why this is a two. Here's our function. Just looks like some shape. I'll just call it f of x. We're going to go from x sub zero to x sub four. Four partitions. So I've already split it up into one, two, three, four, five pieces, right? Which gives me four partitions, four spots in here. And like I told you, what we're going to do is we're going to try and fit kind of a parabola through that part 
fit another parabola through that part, um, and then we would take the um, take the derivative of them. So this has two pieces. Again, notice how this point's getting used getting used twice in there. So the idea just over this partition uh, right here. Notice this is uh, change in x. Notice this is two changes two changes in x. So over that first set of two changes of x, um, I want, I'm just going to call it p of x. I want there to I want to take the integral here to here of this where this is a quadratic. I know that quadratics come in the form uh, x squared plus bx plus c. So I'm going to be doing this. Take this integral and then kind of see where the, where the places fall out, where the parts fall out for it. Before I do, I want to point out what the coordinates of this point would be like this point would right here would be um, it, on the parabola a x naught squared plus b x naught plus c right x sub zero and this point right here if I plug it in to to this parabola would be a x sub one squared plus a x sub one plus c. And the second one would be, right, all that with, with x sub 2s. In. And that's plugged into p. But notice it's at the same exact spot as if it were plugged into the original function. So this is the same as that. This is the same as that. This one is the same as that. So this sub 2 squared. Because they're the same points they're the same spots right I, both of those equations go through both of those spots all three of those spots so those are equivalent to each other part of my work is going to hinge on that all right so let's go ahead and do this so if i do this integral one third a uh, x cubed plus one half b x squared uh, plus cx and that's going to be evaluated from x sub zero to x sub 2. So now notice I would put in the x sub 2s and subtract the x sub 0s. So I'm going to think of this as this. And uh, just because I have these, these kind of nasty fractions in here, I'm going to, uh, so if I pull out a, uh, a 1 sixth, I'm left with this. This would be 2a. This would be 3b. This would be 6c. Right, distribute the 1 6 back in here. Notice how this is a third, this is a half, this is a 1. So we're taking the 6th out. And that just gives us some whole numbers in here to deal with. Now these, I notice there's an x2 minus x sub 0. Actually, in each of these, I can factor these. All right, so just so I don't have to rewrite the whole thing. This is a difference of cubes. So this factor is 2. I'll use a different color. This is difference of squares. So this factor is 2. And this is just something that's linear. But what I want you to notice is they all have an x2 minus x0 in them. So we can factor that piece out as well. So now we have this. I'm going to distribute this 2a into here and this 3b into here. Okay, so now we're pushing all these symbols around. And what I want you to remember now is this. Uh, ax sub 0 squared plus bx sub 0 plus c is f of x sub 0, right? They're the same point. They end up in the same spot. This parabola goes through those two points and our original function f goes through those three points. So if I could have, if I could get this, I could replace it with that, right? If I can get this, I can replace it with that. That's the strategy that we're gonna, that we're gonna do here. And uh, let's gather up some more pieces here. So I'm gonna look around for some, 
for some X2s. And notice I have two of these A, uh, two of these A X squared, X sub two squareds. So I'm going to take one of them right now, and I'm just going to say this, and I'm going to shove the other one uh, just out here somewhere, just so I don't lose it. Well, what's cool then, I have three of these B X sub twos, so I'll take one of those. And I know I still have two of them floating around out here. And then I'm going to grab a C as well. So that leaves me five Cs out here. So notice, like, I've already got that F of X2. Similarly, um, I can do, I've got some X zeros in here. So I'm going to take one of these. There's two of them, two A. So I'm going to grab one of them. And I know that there is another one out here. So I'll just leave it out here. As well. I'm going to grab one of these B sub zeros, X sub zero. Give myself a little bit of space here, just kind of move these. And so then there's still two of those. I've already grabbed one of these C's, so I'm going to grab one of these C's and put it here. So now this is plus four C. And so notice what I have, this and this, and we'll, we'll worry about this in a minute. So AX sub zero squared plus BX sub zero plus C, that's F, F of X sub zero. They're, they are, they're at the same spot. So I still have this. This is my first one. This one, that one. And I noticed I had an unaccounted little piece up here. That guy didn't go anywhere either. Either. So let me write this out. I've got plus this term. I'll throw this term here. Then I'll so this one here, this one here. Then I'll put this one here. Then I've got my two B terms. And I've got my four C terms. Okay, so it's starting to come together. Um, here's some things that I notice. These three things right here, uh, I could actually factor it. Like this is the same as uh, this. They all have an A in them, so you could factor an A out. This, I could take a 2B out of each of these. Got that plus 4C. This is super close to becoming my, my next piece. Notice this. X2 plus X0. X1 is halfway between them. So uh, I'm going to say X sub 0 plus X sub 2 equals 2 X sub 1s. Right, like if x sub 0 is 1 and x sub 2 is 3, and I'm um, sorry, x sub 2 is 3 and x sub 1 is 2, this is a 4, which is 2 of those. Right, I mean, that's how averages work, right? You add these together and divide by 2 and you get that. So x uh, sub 0 plus x sub 2 is equal to 2x sub 1s. Beautiful. So this would be a times x sub 1 squared, uh, two of them, plus 2b times 2x sub 1s, plus 4c. Well, this is interesting. If I, if I square this, 2 squared is 4, so this would be 4a x sub 1 squared, plus 2 times 2 is 4, 4b uh, x sub 1, plus 4c. And I could factor 4 out of there. And I get A times X sub 1 squared plus B times X sub 1 plus C. Wait a minute. That is just the same as F of X sub 1. That is the same as this piece right here, right? They're in the same spot. So this whole thing is like 4 times F of X sub 1. So notice what happened was all of this became that. So I'm just going to do what's in the parentheses right now. I've got 
uh, f of x sub one, 0. I'm going to make this one come next. Plus 4, look at that, 4 f of x sub 1. And then plus f of x sub 2. And let's clean uh, this up right here. Um, x2 minus x, x sub 2 minus x sub 0. That's a distance of 2 change of x's. So this is the same as 2 change of x's over 6, which is change of x over 3. And now that, notice that is just our first three points, though. That's, that's x sub 0, x sub 1, x sub 2. That's just this part right here. But notice I could do this all again and start over, but go from x sub 2 to x sub 4. And what I what I would end up with is this whole thing again. But it would start here, plus 4 times the next, plus the last one. And so notice I could just put those together, and that would be a 2. And if I needed to go out another step even further, I'd start at this one because they happen in groups of three. So it would be that again. And you just keep doing it forever. So like when you combine those, that's why this becomes two. This becomes two. So you go this one, four, two, four, two, four, two cycle until you get to the last one, which is one. All right. I hope that at least one of you made it this far because uh, that was worth your time. Any messages, let me know what questions you have.